The Southwest Foundation for Research and Education in San Antonio has the world's largest baboon colony in captivity with a population of over 2,000 baboons. All are used in various research studies, even the baby baboons. Some are taken from their mothers at birth. In the Foundation's nursery, those baby baboons receive tender loving care eight hours a day from Craig Parks, a research scientist with a zoology degree. Although he considers these cute little baboons as research subjects, they think of him as their mother. Well, they look forward to feeding time. They, they expect you to come in and hold them, don't they? They get restless. They know about when it is. And just before it's time to get feeding, you can see them in there. They get restless, start watching for you at the window and things like that, because they know you're coming. Mm -hmm. They know when it's coming. Craig, a bachelor now, said, if he ever has children of his own, he won't do all this for them. Um, after spending uh, eight hours, a, eight plus hours a day with all these monkeys, I'd be a glutton for punishment to want to go home and spend all that time with my own, I'm afraid. Maybe so, but I just have a feeling he may change his mind when that day comes. Paul Schaefer reporting for NBC News. This is probably not the way you would expect to find an Air Force medic dress. These airmen are taking medical chemical warfare defense training. It is conducted at the School of Aerospace Medicine at Brooks Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas. The Air Force Surgeon General gave the school the task of developing a chemical decontamination procedure. Captain John Hilburn helped plan that course. Uh, we believe that in any uh, ground war in Europe that chemicals would be used. So in view of that, we're preparing our medical courses to uh, decontaminate casualties in the event that uh, we do or are presented with chemical casualties. Before treating wounds suffered during an attack, the patient must first be decontaminated from chemical exposure. Captain Hilburn said treating the skin is simple, wash the body with soap and water. But first, the patient's contaminated clothing must be cut away while leaving on the gas mask. Well, generally, you are wearing just normal fatigues, which is a cotton material, but for the chemical warfare environment, we've got a special uh, charcoal impregnated uniform that they wear that would protect the skin from any chemicals that would get on the uniform. Once casualties are decontaminated, any wounds can then be treated. Patients requiring medical evacuation would be placed in a special casualty wrap, which is charcoal lined. From San Antonio, Texas, this is Paul Schaefer reporting for NBC News. This is Kelly Air Force Base. Bicycles are being used here in a move to fight the energy crisis. But long before there was anything like a gas shortage, bicycles were being used on the base here. Everywhere you look, you will see somebody riding a bicycle while carrying out his or her job on the base. In years past, the bike was used more in the aircraft maintenance area. It was designed in those days to save time and shoe leather rather than gasoline. To conserve fuel usage at the base, now other areas are utilizing the bicycle. And we have a goal of 10% reduction over the 77 period this year. Uh, that is reviewed by me monthly. At a San Antonio Logistics Center Vice Commander Brigadier General Lewis Curtis said energy conservation at Kelly is being taken very seriously. And uh, our quality assurance office has taken to heart the problems that the country is in, as well as the armed services, with having to conserve on petroleum usage. And the staff in the Quality Assurance Office has stopped using the vehicle on base and have all resorted to riding a bike for the trips that they have to make on base, including... For General Curtis is encouraged to see so many civilian and military personnel utilizing bikes on base. He feels confident that 10% consumption goal will be reached, and it will be the bicycle that helps make it possible. Paul Schaefer reporting for NBC News. Encounter with Saturn. This is a collection of photographs taken by Voyager 1 in the fall of 1980 as... <laughs> Thank you. 
Encounter with Saturn. This is a collection of photographs taken by Voyager 1 in the fall of 1980 as it flew past that planet. The exhibit opened a two-year nationwide tour in San Antonio. Other cities scheduled to present this spectacular photographic show include Durham, North Carolina, La Trobe, Pennsylvania, Orlando and West Palm Beach, Florida, Columbus, Georgia, and McAllen, Texas. Included are many pictures never released for public viewing up to now. San Antonio Museum of Transportation Director Joe Zwatsky said the public is fortunate to have the opportunity to view these photos taken 800 million miles from Earth. It's a mind-boggling exhibition. Uh, looking at the colors and all the other things we've learned from Saturn, the, the rings that surround it, it's just uh, photographically, it's a beautiful exhibition, and scientifically, it's, uh, I think it's a very important exhibition for us. The Oregon Museum of Science and Industry in Portland produced the show. It is being made available through the Association of Science Technology Centers in Washington, D.C. Encounter with Saturn will remain on exhibit in San Antonio through the end of June. Then it will move on to Durham, North Carolina. Paul Schaefer reporting for NBC News. The Air Force has launched a search for the largest number of pilot trainees since the beginning of the All-Volunteer Force in 1973. By 1982, Air Force recruiters have the goal of signing up 1,550 men and women college graduates 27 years or under. That's double last year's goal. In 1979, the Air Force lost many of its pilots. Some of those went to work for higher pay as commercial airline pilots. By 1985, the Air Force hopes to fill those losses. Recruiting Publicity Chief Major Harry Sunderland. We've also had an increase in the mission for the Air Force. We've had a, uh, a change in uh, some of the missions, which has caused an increase for pilots and navigators. And we also have a, uh, several new weapon systems coming online that have caused an increased need. A nine and a half year Air Force veteran, Captain Sandy Avery, was one of those who left in 1979 to become an airline pilot. Air travel dropped off, and the captain lost his job. Now he's back in Air Force Blues. He said he would encourage others to do the same. And they have to spend a lot less money to train him, and he can get back in the cockpit, in most cases, a lot quicker than he would otherwise. The Air Force will spend 55 weeks and $223,000 training each pilot. As a second lieutenant, pilots start off earning just under $16,000 annually, including flight pay. Paul Schaefer reporting for NBC News. Say, did you have any guar gum with your meal today? Chances are you did and you don't even realize it. Guar gum is a food thickener. For example, you'll find it in whipped cream topping substitutes. Then over 400 products, including instant oatmeal, ice cream, puddings, pharmaceuticals, and even cattle feed. Those are just a few. But the largest use is in the oil industry as drilling mud and fracturing compounds. Insect and drought resistant, the guar plant, a native to India, grows well in the Texas heat. Fred Newman with the USDA's Agricultural Stabilization and Conservation Service also farms guar near San Antonio. A crop that is grown in the summertime when a lot of the other crops uh, due to our heat conditions that we have here and usual lack of moisture won't grow so well. So it's the Hinkle plant in Kennedy, Texas is one of two guar processing plants in the state. Uh, either plant manager David Andre. The bean is uh, as it's harvested uh, by combine and then uh, processed here uh, during the harvest season. Uh, we finally end up with a, a white flour or white powder uh, which is used as a thickening agent. The price of guar is up 50% over last year. This year's plantings are also up from 2,000 acres last year to 20,000 this summer. And most likely, you and millions of other Americans will be eating that summer crop someday in your daily diet. In San Antonio, this is Paul Schaefer reporting for NBC News. Look alive. 
Okay, we're gonna go on in a minute. Ah, uh, hello out there, everybody. Hi. Uh, cowboy, don't wave at camera. Oh, it's okay. Ham. Eileen Johnston showed off her puppet family to me today. These are just a few of me? hundreds she has made over the years Boy. for church groups, <laughs> schools, bookstores, and uh, of course her five there, grandchildren. Oh, holy. She's making some more puppets over there today. Oh, is she really? You know, at times you forget they aren't actually living, breathing little people. Well, that's what she does all day long, just so, so, so. She does. Yeah. But she just, uh, I don't even know what the Pentagon will tell her. My Mrs. Johnston has sold them in over 30 states and two foreign countries, Japan and Nigeria. That's good. The business grew out of a volunteer a project several story, years huh? ago when she made over 100 puppets oh. for a group at her church. When I first started making them, sometimes they'd startle you when you walked in the room. <laughs> Startle you? Yes, oh. you, you'd forget they were there. Hey, by the way, have uh, you been in a lot of puppet shows or any big Broadway cast? No, but I had my leg in a cast one time. <laughs> oh, Paul Schaefer. You silly fool. <laughs> I'm going to come get your job. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> Space entertainment, like this afternoon carnival. But few non whites choose to take part. Off base, minorities find their choices limited. Many German clubs will not admit them. We're going out to try to get a club. We can't. San Antonio, Texas. The Magic Ballroom Show is on the air from KMAC Radio. The big band sound is going strong nightly over San Antonio airwaves. During a visit to KMAC's Magic Ballroom record show, disc jockey Curtis Short showed off mail the station receives, all favorable, concerning music the station plays each evening of the big band era of the 1940s and 50s. I had a dance band back in 1948 for about three years and played at various clubs, high school and colleges in the San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas, the Magic Ballroom Show is on the air from KMAC Radio. The big band sound is going strong nightly over San Antonio airwaves. During a visit to KMAC's Magic Ballroom record show, disc jockey Curtis Short showed off mail the station receives, all favorable, concerning music the station plays each evening of the big band era of the 1940s and 50s. I had a dance band back in 1948 for about three years and played in various clubs, high school and colleges in the San Antonio area. And of course, I grew up with this type of music at my age, 53 years of old. And On the weekends, the Big Band Sound Record Show is hosted by Calvin Doyle. Yours, and it's time for the Big Band Sound, starting off with Glenn Miller and the orchestra. Calvin and Curtis boast Theirs is the only San Antonio station playing the big band sound in regular programming seven days a week. It was about two and a half or three years ago. I was working on Sundays, and I wanted something different to play besides rock and roll. Everybody else plays rock and roll. I want to be different. So I thought, well, I've got big band records at home. Why not? So I started programming big bands, and it wasn't too long before I started getting some mail from the listeners. It's the big band sound from the Magic Ballroom. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Dr. McNish, why did you choose to become a doctor after you got out of Vietnam? Well, while I was in prison, I had a lot of time to think about what I wanted to do with my life and felt that Probably flying airplanes for the rest of my life wasn't going to be as productive as I would like. I wanted to be do something that would be a challenge to me and also be of service to other people. Looking back now on your experience there, uh, could you explain about the photograph that was in Newsweek? Well, that picture was taken about three days after I was shot down. Uh, 
and it was a picture which the North Vietnamese forced me to pose for in order that they could release it as propaganda showing how they were defeating the American air pirates. You mean it was a setup shot? It was it wasn't actually the actual capture? That's correct. I had gone through about two or three days of intensive torture prior to that picture being taken. What kind of torture? Torture mostly involving uh, being tied in stressful positions and left for long periods of time without food or water and uh, you know, occasional beatings. Um, I'm sorry, Randy. During the time that you were held captive, uh, much of that time, I understand that you were in isolation. You could not communicate too well with other prisoners. Well, I was actually in solitary confinement for about three months of that time and in a two-man cell for approximately 18 to 20 months. During the whole time we were there, we were supposedly not to be able to see or communicate in any way with other Americans. They were trying to keep us separated so that they could better use us for their propaganda efforts. And in those times of, you know, when we were isolated, our greatest victory was being able to continue to communicate despite all of their efforts to stop us. We do everything from tapping on walls to wrapping a blanket around our heads to muffle the sound so that we could shout through a wall to another prisoner on the other side to developing a similar hand code to the deaf mute code of an alphabet code made with the hands and uh, use that to communicate whenever we could sneak a peek at somebody. But we, our basic means of communication was the tap code where we used uh, ways of tapping which we could use any time we were in any way we could make a noise so another prisoner could hear it we could turn it into a message. Can you talk about the mission that you were flying over when you were shot down? I was Not the mission so much but I mean what happened? Well, I was assigned to attack a gasoline storage area approximately 12 miles.